You can't seriously be buying anything that creature told us, right? I mean, it's practically blackmailing us into doing its dirty work. To be honest, the conversation went on for so long, I'm not sure I understood all of it. How about you, Dohalim? Were you able to follow it at all? At the very least, everything it said about the Renan Great Spirit adds up. At the end of the day, this whole chain of events comes back to astral energy. That being said, had we not previously encountered the will of Dana, I suspect I would find its story much more difficult to believe. The spirit of Rana wants to see Dana completely destroyed. But why? Astral energy is supposed to be a force that creates and shapes the world. It doesn't matter. I don't care if we're up against an entire world or what its game is. We're not going to let it destroy Dana. Right. There is one other thing that concerns me. How the Great Spirit, the Helganquil, and the Crown Contest are all part of a centuries-long plan is clear enough. But what about the Renans? How do they factor into all this? <sighs> now that you mention it, and all that talk, Hevrek 35 never even brought up the Renans once. And as for the Helganquil, we never did find out just what they are either. Maybe it had a reason for keeping it silence. Or perhaps there's even more going on. Maybe the others will shed more light on the matter. Let's find out. Who are they? Hmm... W what is it? Oh, my apologies. It's just been so long since I've seen any humans from the outside world. Are you a Renan? Hmm? Oh, yeah, I guess so. Hmm? The Overseer told us to answer any questions you might have. Whatever you want to know, we'll tell you as much as we can. But be quick. Our subjects are undergoing a dramatic shift that we don't want to miss. What a weird guy. He must have meant Hevrecht 35 when he mentioned that overseer. And what was that about subjects? You don't think he meant Dana and Rena, do you? There isn't anyone else we can talk to. I guess we should ask around here. Have you guys lived up here in Dag Faisal with Hevrek 35 for a long time? Yes. I couldn't tell you off the top of my head just how long it's been, though. We regularly go into stasis, so our sense of time has gotten rather out of whack over the years. 
Why are you all even here in the first place? Originally, this station was where we worked to perform maintenance on Lenegas from the outside. We heard that the facility ended up in its current location due to an accident. Oh, it was terrible. Apparently, there was some kind of accident, and when help never arrived, they presumed the entire facility had been destroyed. And you've been working for Hevrecht 35 ever since? Well, at first we thought that there was nobody else inside the facility, but then it turned out the Overseer was there all along. What do you mean? The Helganquil have the technology to cloak themselves around us Renans. As long as they don't do anything obvious, a Renan won't see one, even if it's right in front of them. Which would explain why Xion and I failed to notice the Red Women previously. Do they employ an astral art of some sort? I haven't been able to scientifically confirm it for myself, but from what I understand, the type of cloaking they use is primarily achieved through mechanical means. In addition, they also used hypnosis devices and information control to get us to do what they wanted without being detected. It's a pretty sophisticated operation, especially since it avoids any unnecessary conflict. I have to imagine that's how Lenegas is still run. But aren't the Helganquil themselves controlled by the Great Spirit? If so, why aren't Renans affected by it in the same way? The Great Spirit's mind control only works on Helganquil, so they had to employ other means to manipulate us Renans. You act like this didn't affect you personally. If I was you, I'd be mad as hell at their deceptions. I mean, sure, I was surprised when I first found out about it, but it happened so long ago. Hevrek 35 has clearly ceased concealing itself, though. Why is that? Who can say? My guess is it just got bored, or maybe even a little lonely. Don't you want to go back home to Rena or Lenegas? Our ship is going to be fixed pretty soon. You could ride with us. No way. If we went back after knowing the truth, they'd either just brainwash us or purge us outright. After all this time, there's nothing to be gained from going back. We've all agreed it'd be best to simply stay here and watch everything unfold instead. Things are going just fine with the Overseer. Not that it'll be around much longer. It can't extend its life any further. That said, I'm sure it's pleased to see the final stage of the plan before it passes on, though. Thank you for answering our questions. Do you know anything about a spirit channeling plan? If you mean the first plan from 300 years ago, then yes. Do you know what its main objective was? Yes. It was to use Lenegas to siphon off Dana's astral energy and send it to Rena. Exactly. However, there were two problems we had to consider. First was how to collect and send such a large quantity of astral energy without it becoming sentient. Second, we had to figure out how to convert Dana's energy so it would be compatible with Rena. I take it the solutions to those problems were to use the Wedge for the collection, and then the Sovereign and Maiden to convert the energy. We have a winner! However, the first plan failed when the Sovereign was overwhelmed and became frenzied. <sighs> the reason for that is because the Maiden lost control. I'm told he slaughtered many Renans in Helganquil that day. <sighs> For the next plan, we tried to recreate the Renis Alma, but we didn't have nearly enough of the other non-dark astral energy types. To amend that, we set our sights on Dana, and implemented a system whereby we could extract energy from it. And the crown contest began. Correct. Since the Maiden had been the failing point in the previous plan, it was decided to replace her role with machinery to avoid further mishaps. A new Sovereign had to be made as well. It was such tremendously difficult work, its success was dubious. But from the look of things, it would appear such worries were unfounded. So that's what the purpose of that room we found in the Forbidden Zone was. What about the flower that sprouted from Rena? Flower? Oh, that thing. That's the physical manifestation of all the astral energy that's been harvested from Dana. 
As I'm sure you've noticed, it's quite a lot of energy. At this point, it's likely that it's become physically integrated with Rena's planetary structure. Hevrek 35 mentioned that the spirit channeling plan is entering its final stage. Is that true? It is. I never thought I would live to see the day with my own eyes. And yet here we are. Are we done talking now? If it's all the same to you, I'd really rather not miss anything that's about to happen. He talks like the potential end of the world is just another day on the job. You've got to remember that these guys have been living alone up here for a long time. Who knows what shape their minds are in? Can we talk to you for a few minutes? Sure. It's going to be a while before the two planets undergo their next shift, so I can talk until then. Please, tell us what you know about the Helganquil. You mean the Overseer's species? I can't say I know much about them. Well, for starters, where'd they come from? <laughs> where else? From Rena, obviously. From Rena? Wait, are you telling us those things live right alongside the Renans down there? Of course not. There's really no such thing as Renans in the first place. Excuse me? Oh, I thought the Overseer explained everything. Apparently not. Please, tell us more. Well, in a nutshell, the Renans were originally created from Danans by the Helganquil. <laughs> <laughs> but if that's true, then that would mean there aren't any people on Rena. There aren't. But there are Helganquil. That's what the name literally means in their language. People of Rena. But what need could they possibly have to create a whole new race of people? It was a way to bolster their dwindling workforce. I trust you're aware that the Helganquil are on the verge of extinction, yes? In essence, we were created to carry on their work for the Great Spirit after they all die. They gathered Danans who had an affinity for astral arts and proceeded from there. That's why we, as their descendants, can all cast arts, albeit to varying degrees. Let me get this straight. Are you saying Renans were originally created from Danans that the Helganquil kidnapped? Wait, that explains why almost nobody can use Astro Arts on Dana now. Helganquil technology is truly amazing. The way they alter their bodies is far less invasive than your conventional surgeries. They have these tiny machines that are practically invisible, which they insert into their bodies and- Enough! You needn't tell us anymore. How can you speak so calmly about all of this? I guess I can see how, when viewed in a certain light, their ways may sound grotesque. But if you ask me, I think they ultimately did us a favor. They saved us from crawling the earth in ignorance. If it meant their hands had to get a little dirty in the process, then so be it. Anyway, the Helganquil are the real Renans. Personally, I don't think it's such a big deal. They're also mostly the ones behind what you see going on between the two planets. I think that covers just about everything worth knowing. I see. Thanks for filling us in. Does he really expect us to believe that Renans never truly existed? How absurd. Dohalim. Just when I think we're getting to the bottom of it all, some new revelation smacks us in the face. Then let's hope this is our last revelation for a while. It feels like our whole world has been turned upside down. Is there anything we know that's still true at this point? Seriously. I'm still trying to process the fact that we Renans were created by the Helganquil, let alone the Sovereign and Maiden stuff. Let's take a moment to gather ourselves. I know all of this is a lot to believe and take in, but... I think it's fair to say that we've found the answers we've been looking for. Does everyone agree? Agreed. Though I'll admit that I never expected it to all boil down to Rena's great spirit being behind everything. Everything that's happened, everything we've endured, it's all because of astral energy. 
And to get that energy, the Great Spirit took control of the Helganquil. Then the Helganquil created the Renans, who went on to invade and rule over the Danans. Plus, the reason the Great Spirit can't directly control the Renans as well is likely because they were originally Danans all along. <laughs> Either way, I think it's fair to say we've all had a lot to take in at once. Maybe too much, even. We should probably take it easy and rest our minds a bit. Why don't we all take some time to think things over, before we decide on our next move? That's a good idea, Kisara. If the Renan Great Spirit really is behind all this, then we've got a really big fight ahead of us. Because it's not just Dana on the line, but Rena too. If we're going to do this, we need to be completely sure of ourselves. So let's go ahead and break off for now. We aren't in any immediate danger, so we should be okay. You sure you don't want to be alone right now? I could ask you the same question. I figured I'd get all my thinking in while walking around and checking up on everybody. I'll go along with you. I'm interested to hear what's on everyone's minds, too. Sounds good. Let's go find them. Everyone's just gone their own way, huh? Yeah, let's hit up each spot. Everything we thought we knew, it was all just a fabrication that the Red Women, no, that the Helganquil made up. Right. Assuming we can believe anything that Hevrek 35 has told us, that is. Well, if the names are anything to go by, it's possible the Helganquil could be behind the fruits of Helgen, too. But if Hevrek 35 was telling the truth, and this was all just one massive lie, does that mean everything we've done up until now has been pointless? No, I don't think so. Or at least I hope not. I think it just means we've lost our foothold for now. That's all. Really? Well then, if we've lost it, I guess we'll just have to find another. All of us together. And if we can't find one, then we'll make a new one. End of story. Make one, huh? I see. Right then. Count me in. Oh, it's you two. Does he seem like he's doing any better now? He who? Oh, you mean Dohalim, don't you? I know that we're all struggling to wrap our minds around it all, but he looked like he was taking it really hard earlier. What do you think about everything we've learned? About the Renans and the Great Spirit and all that? On some level, I'm not even really sure what to think, to be honest. I mean... The Great Spirit is like a huge, natural disaster, but with a mind and will of its own. But if that thing's hellbent on trying to destroy our planet, then the only thing left for us to do is stop it. As for the Renans, I suppose my feelings on that are a bit more mixed. How so? Coexistence between Danans and Renans in Menensea is still a work in progress. In my case, I think that's partly because deep down, I was still on guard around Renans. So, <laughs> to be told that they're like us, that they're actually just like us is, well, <laughs> I guess it's a little deflating, to be honest. You kept a pretty level head. You mean about the Renans? At the end of the day, the Helgan Quill and the Great Spirit are the ones who are responsible. But, at the same time, I realize that not every Danon is necessarily going to believe that either. I know you're already aware of this, but the list of grievances the Danons have against the Renans is long, and understandably so. And, if people then find out that they're all actually one and the same, yeah, I don't think they're going to take to it too kindly. Even just among the Danons, I'm sure there'll be some who emerge with power, and some who won't. I think if we can find a way to get rid of that imbalance, then we'll be in a truly good place. Well, first we can try to figure out what to do about the existing conflicts we have. Yeah. 
It'd be nice if one day people could learn to get past their hatred like Rinwell did. It's no small task. We can't pretend like the past didn't happen and ask people to forget their very real pain and suffering. Right. Everybody has their reasons for feeling the way that they do. But if we just keep yelling at each other about it, we'll never move on. In a worst-case scenario, it might lead to even more people getting killed. And we all have to figure out how to meet halfway. Not just that, but to also embrace each other's pain, in a sense. That's an interesting way of putting it. It's true. Everybody has their own scars, their own trauma. The first step to healing those wounds is to put aside that hatred. It won't be achieved through reasoning, but I think it's a good first step, if nothing else. And now, I think I see a way to move forward. But to do that, first we need to make sure our planet isn't going to get wiped out. You both seem awfully calm. <laughs> Only because after everything we've seen, we don't have the energy to keep being shocked. How are you holding up, Rinwell? That whole talk about the Renans looked like it shook you up a bit. Yeah. I get this sinking feeling whenever I remember how Dan and mages like my family were persecuted and died out. And now, I finally know why that is. <sighs> but I was thinking... If Renans end up living together with Danans again, then mages won't be such an unusual thing to see on Dana anymore, right? <laughs> I know it's not as simple as all that, but... Danans probably won't be so quick to let their guards down, and there might be Renans who still act superior because of their arts. It wouldn't surprise me. 300 years of bad blood and prejudice isn't going to be an easy thing to overcome. Yeah. I know firsthand just how much hatred can take hold in your heart once you let it in. But even so, I was still able to change. And if I can change, so can anyone else. So I was thinking maybe, I don't know, I could use my position as both a Danon and a mage to help bring both sides together. Renwell. That great spirit worries me too, though. Dana's will feels so warm and inviting. So why is Rena's will trying to destroy our entire planet? Now that you mention it, Everick 35 and the other scientists here never really brought that up. Maybe they don't know either. Maybe. But regardless, at the end of the day, Dan is still our home. There's no way we can let it be destroyed. We won't. We'll keep it safe no matter what. I still can't believe it, man. You're not the only one still trying to make sense of all this. Believe me. Really? You've never struck me as the type of guy to get hung up on these sorts of things. Did you forget what happened back in Thistleham? Once my memory started coming back to me, I felt completely and totally lost. It was really that bad for you? Yeah, it was. But thanks to Law and everybody else, I remembered that I still had things out there worth fighting for. Man, I think you might be a better guy than me, Alfin. All I can remember thinking was, when's this guy gonna get his act together? Law. I was too worried about repeating the same mistakes I'd made back with my dad, and running away from the truth. That was no way to live, and I've tried to stay strong, my way. But all this talk about other races and the world ending, 
if I can be honest with you guys, it's just all too much for me to handle right now. I know this is going to sound strange coming from me, but maybe the key is not to worry too much about the big stuff right now. Oh? I used to worry all the time about my thorns, for obvious reasons, but I never really opened up to anyone about them. And when I realized my visions pointed to a threat that was bigger than me, I didn't know what I should do or who to tell. But that's when I finally got it. You guys were all there for me, to teach me what's really important. I just had to open up and listen. In other words, if you let the big picture stuff get you all muddled up inside, you'll begin to lose sight of what you really care about. Yeah, I think you're right. The thing that's most important, what I really care about, all I want to do is protect the people that really matter to me, to fight for them. That's good enough, right? Not everyone is strong enough to fight. Huh? It's something your dad told me once when he was still alive. Law, you know you're strong enough to fight, and you're strong enough to protect the people you care about. Forget all the big stuff going on. Just don't lose sight of what you want to protect in the first place. Sound good? Yeah. Yeah, I think it does. <laughs> it's like a big weight's been lifted off my shoulders. I'll fight to protect the people around me. Just like I always have. I think that's best. I apologize for making you witness that. You mean hearing the origins of the Renans? Indeed. It's shocking to have so many things I thought to be indelible fade away in mere seconds. Even I'm still not sure everything we've heard here is actually true. Let's not delude ourselves. If what we've heard is a lie, it's a rather elaborate one. Hmm. <laughs> I can only imagine that you must have been constantly feeling like this, ever since your memory returned, Alfin. And you as well, Shion. About your thorns, and being a maiden. That's just part of being alive, don't you think? Well, to say the least. But enough about me. I'm not concerned for myself. What concerns me is all of the other Renans out there. When you say the other Renans, you mean the ones that are living on Lenigus or Dana, right? Correct. Even if we stop the Great Spirit from annihilating Dana, our problems will still remain. Putting aside the untold state that Rena may be in, if we do not truly belong there, we will have to think long and hard about where it is that we wish to return to. So, I guess your only real choices at this point are to either stay on Lenigus, or come down to Dana, huh? And right now, Lenigus might not even be a safe option. And at the same time, Danans are hardly likely to embrace Renans with open arms. If the issue is forced, things could turn dire. There is, after all, three centuries worth of hatred to overcome between us. And the victims of our rule have absolutely every right to feel animosity towards us Renans. Our own circumstances as the aggressors are irrelevant. I didn't expect the former Lord of Menencia to be so down about people reconciling. Menencia's fate was a stroke of good luck. There had been backlash over how it had been ruled, and I was blessed to have sympathizers among my ranks. Still... Even now, there remain ardent dissidents. But things can still change if you have the right people to help lead the way. Isn't that what you hope to achieve on Lenigus, after this is all over? Indeed. I have fully accepted the burden of that responsibility. In that regard, I remain determined. On that note, I have something of a favor to ask of you, Alfin. Oh? What is it? I wish for you to serve as a mediator, so that the Renans can live on Dana peaceably. As the one and only Blazing Sword, I suspect the Danans may listen to what you have to say when problems arise. And I take it that you'll be the one to represent the Renans? Yes. I realize that I'm asking quite a lot of you. However, the fact of the matter is that it will take time for Renans to re-enter Danan society without any bloodshed. That is why... <laughs> You're the same as ever, Dohalim. Is it too much? No, relax. You get so tense and formal when you're asking for a favor. 
Listen, there's no need for that. We're friends. <sighs> You're too kind. I can see you were raised well. That's some high praise, Alfin. Then I'll ask once again, this time just as friends. Alfin, will you help me? You don't even need to ask. Of course I will. Thank you, my friend. Well, it sounds like everyone's learning from their past and using it to create a better future for everyone. What about you, Xion? How do you feel about the origin of the Renans? To be honest, I'm... I'm not really all that shocked, actually. I mean, I might be a Renan in the literal sense, but I've never really felt like one of them. Right now, it's... kind of a mystery. How do you mean? Because for a really, really long time, all I ever thought about was how I was going to die. Not if or when, but how. I thought I'd die alone. That fate had me in its steely grip. I would have never imagined that I'd be traveling with someone like you, fighting to save Rena and Dana. I mean, how could I have? It's been going on for 300 years. All this tragedy and destruction. When you consider the Helganquil's part in all this, it's been even longer than that. It was Naori's hope that somehow, someone in the future would be able to stop it before it was too late. How it fell on us, of all people, to heed that call is a mystery. I don't think Naori was hoping that we would just stop the world from getting destroyed. She considered me, a Danon, as a real person. And she very much cherished her own people, too. I don't think she wanted the world to be saved just so they could go back to hurting each other. Oh, maybe this is what she meant. Huh? When we were talking to Kisara earlier, about all that stuff like everyone's needing to meet halfway and embrace each other's pain and suffering, she said that the first step down that path was for each of us to put aside our own hatred. That means forgiving other people, even and especially before they forgive you. Forgiving. So it goes both ways, right? Is that what you're saying? Yeah. I don't just mean forgiving things that happened in the past, either. Conflicts will keep happening. If we have any hope of moving on and building a better future, we have to all learn to forgive each other. You know, you're right. People can hurt one another, without even meaning to. I know that better than most, thanks to these thorns. It's not going to be easy getting past this pain. But if we can do it, I'm sure there'll come a time when we can all truly understand each other. I'm there with you, Xion. I too want to protect the world we live in, and all the people we care about. I think that's the very least I can do to repay Naori for everything that she did. Yeah. I want a future that she would feel proud to live in, and I'm going to fight for it. Whoa there, Savior Girl. We're here to save you too, you know. Yes, I know. <sighs> Don't worry, I haven't forgotten. I want to live, and that's the honest truth. Well, is everybody ready to do what needs to be done? I am. There's a lot to think about, but at the end of the day, Dan is still in danger. I don't care who we're up against. We'll kick their ass! What are your thoughts, Alfin? I want to know what's on your mind, too. Like Law said, if we have to fight the Great Spirit on Rena, then so be it. It's trying to rob us of our entire world, and it's going to take not just our home, but all of existence along with it. That alone is enough to make it our enemy. But it's not only that. One way or another, I think beating the Great Spirit is going to be tied to us saving Xion. You're saying there's a chance? You're referring to the vision of destruction we all saw in Lenigus, I take it? Yeah. 
Three centuries ago, the astral energy that appeared at the spirit channeling ceremony showed Naori that vision. And to hear Xion tell it, it's the same one that she sees from her own thorns as well. Indeed. Xion's thorns are comprised of dark astral energy, the one type which we know is native only to Rena. And if Rena's great spirit is what's behind Dana's pending destruction, then... Xion's thorns are the great spirit? It's not actually on Rena like we thought? We don't know anything for certain. At the very least, though. I think it's possible her thorns are a part of the Great Spirit. While the main body resides in Rena. <sighs> Xion. If these thorns really are a part of Rena's Great Spirit, I'm going to go over there and give it a piece of my mind and then some. The question is, how do we confront it? Suffice it to say, that flower growing out of Rena is enormous, large enough to house the will of an entire planet. The Wedge and Lenigus were both hard enough for us to overcome in their own right. This is an altogether greater challenge for merely six. And we only know about the Thorn's connection thanks to Naori. Hevrick 35 has been observing the Great Astral Spirit this whole time. It wouldn't ask us to fight it unless it has a plan of some sort. Let's go see what that is. Our minds are made up. Let's go give Hevrek 35 our answer. So if the Sovereign and Maiden were originally boot-up programs for Lenigus, what about now? Even with the Forbidden Zone in ruins and the Renis Alma stolen, Lenigus is functioning fine. If it needed us before, it doesn't appear to now. First they lumber you with a position you never asked for, then you're discarded like you're nothing? Who the hell do they think they are? More importantly, who do they think we are? We might not even factor into their list of concerns. I just hope everyone on Lenigus is safe. Worst comes to worst, Lenigus is equipped with a large number of starships the people can escape in. As long as the whole satellite doesn't suddenly explode or something, they should be fine. Wait, explode? In any case, if we're truly going to make a difference, it's on Rena we're needed, not Lenigus. The people there will be fine, I'm sure of it. Right. Do you have your answer for me? We want to ask something first. You're asking us to fight an entire planet. How exactly do you expect us to do that? You must have something up your sleeve, or else you wouldn't put us up to it. The Great Astral Spirit is an immense being, but its actual will does not run throughout its entire body. Rather, its will is derived from the core, which supports the rest of the body, and is where its strength is most densely concentrated. Therefore, if you destroy the core, 
The Great Spirit shall become unable to maintain sentience and return to being ordinary astral energy. And how are we supposed to destroy that core? By using the Renus Alma. <sighs> you will also need the assistance of both the Sovereign and the Maiden. They are our best tools for suppressing and controlling astral energy. Using their powers, the Maiden shall seal the great astral spirit within her body, and the Sovereign shall wield the power of the Renus Alma to destroy it. Hold on. That sounds a lot like what Xion described before. Yeah, killing herself to take out the thorns with her. She was actually right all along. By my calculations, your powers combined should be sufficient to destroy the great astral spirit and disperse its energy widely enough to make it difficult to reform. What will happen to the Maiden once we manage to beat the great astral spirit? Any matter contained within the field of destruction shall be erased. So it really will kill me. This method is the most simple one available to destroy the Great Spirit, and is therefore our most reliable option. What are our other options? There is little reason to consider alternative courses of action when the most optimal among them is so clear. You don't get it. I promised Xion that she wouldn't die, that we'd save the world without needing to sacrifice her. We didn't fight this whole time just to give up on her at the very end. If there's any other way to take out the Great Spirit, I want to hear it! This plan shall lead to the fewest losses in preserving your world. Abandoning it is irrational. That's... It is vital that you proceed with this plan. A part of Rena's great astral spirit already resides within her. <sighs> Three hundred years ago, the Great Spirit descended upon Lenegus in an attempt to assume direct control of the Spirit Channeling Ceremony. We have reason to believe the Great Spirit left part of itself behind, and that it now resides in the Maiden. Which would make Alphen's earlier hypothesis correct. That part inside the Maiden belongs to the Core, and can be used by the Great Astral Spirit to revive itself. So long as it remains, it will be all but impossible to fully eradicate the Great Spirit. That is why it is necessary for it to be vanquished only once it is whole. Without the Maiden's direct control over the Great Spirit, attacking it is futile and will only serve to strengthen it. No! <sighs> Wait. Naori said that the Renis Alma can suppress the self-realization of astral energy and that the thorns can be neutralized by placing them in it. If so, can't the same also be done to the Great Spirit, seeing as the thorns are simply part of it? Well, can it? It is true that the Renis Alma is capable of what you suggest, and could contain the Great Astral Spirit. Yes! However, Doing so requires fine control on the level of the spirit channeling ceremony, considering that the Renis Alma was previously lost when that ceremony failed. I cannot allow it. Its uncertainty is simply too great. What does that mean for us if you won't allow it? Your starship will not be restored, and you will all be unable to leave here. Why, you? <sighs> fine, then. I'd rather stay here and rot than do it your way. Alfin? Whatever we do, if we mess up, Dana's screwed. The Great Spirit will destroy it. If you're fine letting that happen, and we have nothing to gain either way, then I'd rather do nothing. We want to stop Dana from getting destroyed. We want to save it. But not if it means having to sacrifice one of us in the process. If all you're gonna do is sit back and watch us where it's safe, then quit ordering us around and shut up! Alfin... What you say is irrational. Be that as it may, I shall accede to your demand. You'll agree? I am an observer. The Sovereign, Maiden, and Renis Alma are my species' greatest achievement. 
I wish to see how well they work against the Great Spirit in light of our demise by its hands. But what are we supposed to do about the Renis Alma? One of your buddies ran off with it back on Lenigus. It is likely that the Renis Alma is with the Great Spirit, functioning as a catalyst for it to receive Dana's astral energy. So our only option to retrieve it is to head straight for the Great Spirit and take it back? According to my observations, the astral energy is most densely concentrated in the center of Rena, where the Great Spirit's core is located. So right in the middle of that giant flower, then. I have one more question. You've said that Rena's Great Astral Spirit is already integrated with the planet. What will happen to Rena once it vanishes? Without the will of the Great Spirit, Rena is predicted to collapse. Even in such a scenario, the energy will disperse, and the Great Spirit will likely not reform. So you're saying that even if we manage to beat the Great Spirit without destroying it, we'll still be in danger? Likely, the collapse will occur in stages. It is recommended that you all escape before the final stage. Man, I wish that thing would tell it to us straight for once. Havrek 35 and the others have gotten used to hypothesizing from afar is all. Fix our starship. We're going to Rena. Excellent. But I want to make one thing clear. We're doing this for ourselves, to protect what matters to us. We're not doing it for your sake, or because you told us to. Remember that. It matters little to me. The end result shall be the same. Repair work on your starship has commenced. You'll have to wait until it's finished. Man, is it too much to ask for Hevrick 35 to talk like a normal person? I swear I can feel my brain starting to fry after listening to all that complicated stuff. Don't worry. I think we're mostly done with him. Now all we have to do is rest up and wait. Once the Fall Nights is good to go again, we'll be taking off for Rena right away. Is the Renis Alma really our only hope against the Great Spirit? There has to be another way, right? Xion's Fire Master Core was able to suppress astral energy to prevent it from gaining sentience, right? Couldn't we make use of that somehow? I'm not sure. In small doses, maybe. But with the amount of energy we're talking about here... Back in Calaglia, the Blazing Sword was able to take in a whole spirit vessel's worth of energy. If it has the capacity to manage that, it can do this, right? Except after it absorbed the energy, it ended up releasing it all moments later, remember? Let's not forget, it nearly killed you. Besides, this is the great spirit we're talking about, not a paltry vessel. Even if I could use the Master Core, your body wouldn't be able to take the strain of channeling that much energy. Hevrecht 35 didn't mention it, and it did not seem the type to skimp on details. So assuming it's even possible, the chances are slim to none. You're probably right. You still thinking about what the scientists told us? About where Renans really come from? I am. But not for myself. You're worried about the future of the Renan people. The fact that our people have been the same this whole time will only give the Danans further reason to resent us. But you still intend to confront this truth head on, don't you? Well... I did declare that I would live my life for the living, and not the dead. Even as I dream of retirement, I shall remain dedicated to the cause. 
I'm sure you'll do great. Now that I think about it, I don't believe I've ever heard you criticize or reproach us Renans even once. I'm no saint. I have skeletons in my closet, too. There was definitely a time when I hated Renans for who they were. I hated them just for being Renan. But you changed that, Dohalim. You gave me an opportunity to see them in a different light. Thanks to your reforms, we were able to stand next to Renans not as slaves, but as equals for the first time in our lives. Of course, I'm sure there were some Renans who still hated us on the inside. But we knew that not all of you were like that. There were those of you who were good. And that was a start. When it comes down to it, Renans are just people. They can be good or bad, just like Danans. That is, in essence, the heart of your approach, isn't it? That we're all people. Yeah, it is. When you can pull someone aside and talk to them one-on-one, -on -one, then you have the chance to come to an understanding. But as soon as you stereotype, that chance goes away, and you stop thinking of them as people that you can relate to. I understand what you're saying. But we're talking about massive numbers of Renans and Danans alike. Realistically speaking, surely they won't all be able to get along. Even if we end up butting heads with one person, maybe we'll find better luck among their friends. If we can build a society that works like that, that'll be something worth nurturing and protecting. So you wish for people to form real bonds and do away with the hierarchy outright? to deal with one another as humans, and nothing more. That's the ideal future you hope to see when this is all over? Yes, I do. I think it would make for a fine tribute to my brother's legacy. Though, that said, I would be doing it for the people of the future first and foremost. Do you still plan to return to Lenigus when this is over? Indeed I do. I don't know whether I'll be able to reside in Lenigus proper, however. My first order of business may be to find somewhere to live. You'll always have a home in Menencia, you know. <laughs> As I shall ever keep in mind. Well, if you ever need a helping hand, don't hesitate to come get me. I'll always be there for you, Doe. Did you just... <laughs> Never mind. Thank you, Kisara. I appreciate your patience as I work all this out. Don't even mention it. And really, when you think about it, now that we know the two of us aren't so different after all, don't you think that brings down a barrier that used to be between us? <sighs> you know, I hadn't actually thought of it that way before. <laughs> but I do like the sound of it. Yeah, I think I do too. Hey, why'd you call me here? Was there something you wanted to talk about? Well, if everything we've heard about the Great Spirit is true, then we're getting close to our final battle. So I wanted to apologize while I can. Apologize? For what? I was being real stupid before, about whether Dana's will had been controlling us and all that. I get why you're angry now. Anybody would be if something they trusted was being questioned. So, I'm sorry, Runwell. Really. I should have kept my mouth shut. No, Law. Honestly, I think you might have been onto something. Of course you were worried. Who wouldn't be if they found out there might be some invisible force pulling our strings this whole time? But you... you really trust Dana's will, don't you? Is it because you can sense it a lot more than the rest of us? Because you can understand it? Yeah, I think that might be part of it. But I think... I also want to believe it's good. Believe? Remember how I used to really resent coming from a family of mages? Yeah, of course. 
because you were always on the run and had to live in hiding. When we rescued Zephyr and, and I finally decided to come along with you all, something changed inside me. It was the first time I felt like my powers had any meaning, even if that meaning was only helping you guys fight. Then, when I felt Dana's will, I was overwhelmed by how vast and warm it was. It made me want to believe my powers were made to connect with it. It made me believe I had a bigger purpose. So that's why you hope it doesn't turn out to be bad. You almost need it to be kind. Yeah. Well, all right. Then I promise I'll lay off bad-mouthing it. You will? There's no way for me to know for sure one way or the other, right? But you trust it, Rinwell, and that's enough for me. So I'll trust it because you do. Uh, remember what I said about neither planet's great spirit reaching us here? Hmm? Yeah? That's not quite true. I can feel just a little bit of Rena's inside you and everyone else. Uh, you... what? I sensed it when we first got here. It's a really small amount, so it doesn't feel like it has a will of its own. But I think that's how Dana's energy probably is, too. So you're saying there's a little bit of Dana's will inside each of us? In a way, doesn't that mean we're all Dana's will? What? Well, like you said, unless Dana's energy comes together, it has no will. So if we all have a little bit of Dana's astral energy inside us... Yeah, maybe... Heffert 35 might know the answer. But, you know what? I don't need to ask it. My will is my own. I fight for who I want to fight for. That's who I am now. Who I've become. So thanks, Rinwell, for sharing that with me. Ah. To be honest, the only reason I was suspicious of Dana's will... Well, I mean, it mostly was... I feel like you and I had grown apart lately, and I was worried it was because... Huh? Uh, never mind. <clears throat> Nothing. Just forget about it. Huh? Uh, no. What were you saying? Saying? I don't remember Come saying on. anything. Now you won't tell me what you were no, thinking? No, that's not what I'm saying. Then spit it out already. Um... Are you sure you don't want to get some rest? I can't. I've got too much on my mind. Especially knowing how close our last battle is. How are you doing, Xion? Same as you. Still trying to absorb everything. Remember when it was so simple, we were only fighting all the lords on Dana? <laughs> all of that feels like a lifetime ago, doesn't it? Ages and ages ago. Everything that's happened since we first met. So many fights, so much chaos, so many wonderful people. If I hadn't run into you that day, well, I wouldn't have met all of you. I never would have held the blazing sword or looked for something more. I wouldn't have my memories back. I'd still be a faceless slave, and like as not long dead. Hey, Alfin. I want you to promise me something. Yeah? If we can't find the Renis Alma, there's something I want you to do.